We've talked a lot about how young your team is and over the last couple of weekends, how, how are these young guys doing? You know what? It, like, it's a work in progress. And, it, and, and it's uh, – it's, sometimes it seems like it's one step forward, two steps mm-hmm. back. Two steps forward, one step back. And, and that's a combination of a lot of things. That's, one of it is being – as young and inexperienced as we are that that that's a piece of it the other piece is the combination and, and ironically i'll play into the cc thing chris mayotte and i talked for about a half hour this morning and um he's got a very young team as well and like so it's a combination of having a young team and teaching them how to be a team and how uh, each player to be a productive member and and uh you know do what they do well become a puzzle piece it takes a lot of different instruments to make up the orchestra type of thing you know like that th- that's the progression in 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 creating a, a real team a hockey team instead of a, a just a group of individuals um but the 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 task this year for teams like Air Force and Colorado College uh, are 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 much much more difficult uh, than it's been in the past, and the reason being is uh, we are very very young. Both our teams are very extremely young in a year where college hockey is extremely old, and it's extremely old for reasons. Uh, the NCAA giving all the fifth year, the transfer portal, the graduate transfers. Like uh, hey, when you. When, Right now, there is a lot of players in junior hockey that should be on Division One rosters, but they didn't get there because schools had to use money to keep their fifth-year seniors, and they pushed those kids back into junior hockey. So, uh, we, you know, Colorado College and Air Force are both. Uh, we would be extremely young teams in a typical year, but this year, uh, times that, times that by by four or five, just just because of uh, the, how the landscape is, has changed. And, you, you know, you had that exhibition game with them, but I'm assuming you guys are a much different team than that team that played, you know, a month ago at CC. Well, I, I, would, th- I would think both of our teams are going to be a lot different. And uh, we're, we're both young, and uh, they're doing a good job. They're not giving up a lot of goals. And uh, – uh, they scored a few against BC. They didn't get anything against Northeastern, but uh, you know, and that's the sign of a of, of a well coached team, especially early. You can teach defense where odd offense is most times, oftentimes, uh, God given, and uh, uh, so they're not scoring a lot of goals. We're not scoring a lot of goals. Uh, they're playing real well defensively. We've got more work to do defensively. Uh, if I had a, a concern going into this weekend, it's not about who's going to score the most goals. It's going to who's going to allow the least amount of goals. You know, uh, because and uh, uh, like uh, you know, like I said, uh, uh, we've got a ways to go. We saw that against Denver. Now Denver's a top. You know, they, they they lost last weekend, but I still say they're a legit easy top 10 team and I think when it's all said and done unless they don't get goaltending will uh will be a, a a top a top five team uh but I think both uh Colorado College and Air Force I think I think I think both of us are a lot different than we were uh three weeks ago uh the one common denominator may be that uh our best players um uh their best player is their big goalie and uh and our best player arguably has has been our goalie you're getting Schilling back this week. How nice was it just for, to see some of the other guys, though? The opportunity they got. Yeah, it was it was good. It was you know it was it was good for them to be able to get in and in, get in, get some experience. That's for sure. It was it, it was an awfully good weekend for that. Um, you know, you give them a little bit of a taste, and because uh, uh, you know practice every day when practice is your games it gets a little bit monotonous so it was nice to be able to have a series and you don't have a series like that very often division one hockey is so competitive from top to bottom there's no gimmies like there just isn't hey there's more division one talent out there in the junior leagues than there are division one lockers available so there's nobody you know hey you've got your elite lead but and you've got the you got a food chain. You got your power five schools and those up here, and um, and you've got your mid mid majors and you've got your division two and three schools and and there there is a food chain. But competitively, you know that food chain between the power five and the group of five in football might be like this. Um, uh, between those 
in basketball with the 320 teams. It might be like this, the top and the bottom. Between us, it, it's, it's more like this because uh, they're just, like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of players that that have the talent to play Division One hockey that are playing Division Three hockey right now, just simply because there there wasn't enough there wasn't enough lockers, and we lost Robert Morris, we lost Alaska, and then in those teams, there's another reason teams are getting older and deeper. The better players on those teams filtered into other programs, you know, which even made less opportunities for for in for for incoming players. The Pikes Peak Trophy, you guys haven't had it in a while. How important is it? Or what would it do for this program if you guys were to get it what, back? What, two speak? years? We haven't had it for two years. There was a time where we hadn't had it for 25 years, so I'm not going to feel bad about that. Um, Colorado College is an NCHC team, and, uh, and uh, they, sh they should. There's absolutely no reason why they shouldn't do very well against Air Force every year. And uh, we won it five times in a row. Um, and uh, uh, we've lost it two in a row. And uh, would we, do we want it back? You darn right we want it back. And uh, uh, last weekend playing that series at Lindenwood, it wasn't about Lindenwood. It was about us. It was about us getting better and, uh, and, and, and being better prepared for the series with Colorado College. Uh, this is a huge series for us. Coaches will come on. There's that'll come on and talk about these rivalry games, and they'll say, you know, posture, and you know, this is just, just another, just another game. Uh, no, uh, BS. It ain't just another game. Um, there's when you look at our schedule, um, all the games are important, and uh, they're they're all important, and the playoffs are even more important. But when you look at the schedule, they're all important. But there's a couple that are a little more important, and uh, one of them is Army. One of them is Colorado College, and uh, the other one is Denver. Uh, and uh, the Denver one got, uh, got away from us and uh, uh, in a big-time way. That's in the rearview mirror. We've still got CC in front of us. We've still got Army. And uh, like I said, they're all big. But, uh, no, the, the, the city championship and the Pikes Peak Trophy, like, it should mean something. And if it doesn't mean something, we shouldn't be playing. Coach, you scored the first goal of the game for the first time this season. How important is it, especially with a young team, to get out? It's good. To I got the puck. I, you, I, I, you, you, you can have it if you want. I kept if, it. If you autograph yeah. it for yes, me. Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just curious, especially with a young team, if it matters to get out to a lead and be able to, you know, play with some momentum behind you rather than catching up. Yeah. And it's just, you know, to us, um, you know, it's about getting off to a great start. And – like, we haven't gotten up. Like, up in Denver, we were terrible. Terrible. Puck dropped and bodies were falling. But the bodies that were falling were the guys in blue. I mean, we're, like, we've got to be difficult to play against. And you can't be difficult to play against unless, you, unless you're difficult right from the get-go. And uh, um, uh, establishing physical presence. You know, uh, you, can't, you can't just be soft for a period and a half and then say, we're going to all of a sudden get tough. Well, then that just gets you in trouble. Now you're down on the scoreboard. Now you're going to get penalties. If you're going to get some penalties, if you're going to get some penalties, uh, get them early and make sure they're aggressive penalties. And uh, the one thing I like, told you were there, uh, we had a couple of each, but uh, and it was ironically the same guys. Jake Marty had two penalties the one night. One, he, he blew a guy up. The other one was a stick penalty. You know, one will take earlier in the first half of the game because we're sending a message and, and it's, it's indicative of how we want to play and how we want to come out. The other one was uh, Mitch Digby. Mitch blew up a guy and then got another a, a lazy type penalty. And uh, you're not going to go through a game without getting a penalty. That, 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 otherwise, the referees are going to – we won't need referees, and, and uh, they know that. So they're going to call penalties because they want to make their living. So there's going to be penalties. So if you're going to get some penalties called in the game, you better get the ones you want called. And, um, you know, for, for us, like, it, it's, it's being aggressive right from the get-go. And, uh, and uh, if, we, uh, if we get one for finishing a check a little bit heavier than we should early in the game, so be it. I'd rather have that than somebody throwing snow or sweep checking and not laying a finger on somebody. Um, hockey is a, a violent collision sport uh, and uh, played by, played by uh, modern-day gladiators. And, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, like you're, you're either out there and, uh, you know, you're out there with a do or die mentality. It's that way. That's the way you have to have it. it like if there's, a, it's the closest thing that you can simulate to war. Now people aren't hopefully dying in a hockey game, but you better have a life and death 
uh, mentality when you're out there because that guy lined up against you, winning and losing, winning and losing be, it is, it, it, it has to be. Winning and losing has to equate with life and death uh, or you're going to get beat. It's simple as that. And uh, we haven't had enough 60-minute segments of that. And, um, again, we're young, we're growing, um, and uh, we've got a lot to learn. Uh, our guys are having a hard time going back to back. We've got a lot of guys that don't have a lot of experience on the ice. They don't also, I also don't have a lot of experience in the weight room. Um, these teams that we're playing have more man strength than we do because they're older. They've spent more time in the weight room, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, we're going to go through this. And, and uh, the thing for us is every weekend we've wanted to get better. We've wanted to say after the weekend, say we've taken a step. We are a little bit better. We made some progress from last weekend. I think we've accomplished that uh, in every weekend except for the Denver weekend. And uh, the Denver weekend, we failed, and we failed because we allowed Denver. Hey, Denver's more talented than us. I mean, we have this time of year probably have a better chance of winning the Powerball than beating them on a regular basis. And uh, but but the one thing that 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 there's no excuse for uh, Denver is a skilled team, deeper team. Um, uh, a much more talented team than we are. But ju all that has nothing to equate with work. And um, we can't allow anybody to outwork us. Our attitude and our work ethic has to be better than our opponent. And that's regardless if we're a, a young team, whether an experienced team. And that's the thing that bothered me most about the Saturday game is uh, Denver's their, – their, their hunger level, their hunger level on Saturday far exceeded ours. And that's, that's, uh, that's unacceptable in Falconland. I have an off-topic question. Uh, favorite Halloween candy? Um, right now, like, if I look at a, at a candy bar, uh, two pounds automatically goes on the back of my pants. So uh, yeah, right now, um, I'm into handing out candy and uh, not in taking it. But if I had to, um, it's hard to beat uh, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. It's hard to beat a Frozen Snickers bar. Um, I would have to say that those would be my 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 go-to. Um, am I am I am I am I being am I endorsing? Is this am I do? Is this an NCAA violation? Like, is this going to get me in some trouble? Is uh, is uh, are the other candy companies going to going to call and and quit giving their support to the academies? I I don't know. But that you asked the question. I answered it. I like uh, it's. Uh, it's just a scary time to be. It's a scary time to be old, an old guy in Frank's territory. It just is because you never know what's going to come out of his mouth, and I don't know what comes out is appropriate, not appropriate. I have had all the training. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I'm curious. You said you talked to Chris Mayotte for 30 minutes or so. How well do you know him? Like, how well do you know him in past years? Um, I got to know him pretty good because uh, I'm close to, uh, to his old bo uh, uh, to his bo uh, boss, Nate Lehman at Providence, and close to his old coaching uh, teammate, Steve Miller, who's, and Steve was there at Providence uh, uh, with him as well. So that's, that's uh, how, how we got acquainted. And, uh, um, you know, like all these CC coaches and there's, uh, that have come and gone, um, like to be honest with you, like I I've loved every one of them. They're they they're they're they've they're all good guys, delightful guys, uh, good guys to work with. Um, they're hockey guys, um, and uh, he he is a he's a very good. He's got a great he's got a great coaching resume, and 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 he's. He's a legit good guy. He's a legit good guy. I, I like him. Um, you know, other than when they play us, uh, I'm not rooting against him. I can tell you that. I, 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 li I like him. I like him a lot. Do you get a sense from him that this rivalry, this game will keep going? Oh, yeah. A bus playing them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't it? I mean, if we just accuse them of being chickens and then we would w rule the city. I mean, like, I, can you say chickens? Like, are the poultry people going to get – am I in trouble with the poultry people now? I, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, okay. One more, with the, the pool of junior hockey players who couldn't get in, is that going to help you? Can you go get some of those guys? Because that, that, that's, you that? that's a very, you know, like, you are way smarter than I thought you were. I read all your football stuff, and it's okay. I mean, you need to be doing more about hockey. But, like, you're dead on. I mean, we feel there, there is, 
and actually uh, Brian Riley is one of my best friends, and then uh, we talk all the time, and we do feel with these lo- rosters being loaded up with fifth-year seniors and that, there is a surplus of good older players that 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 are available, and um, no, uh, we we think there is. We're working that pool, and um, we think it's going to be that way for a couple of years because that obviously that fifth year deal, giving it to all the the play uh, the student athletes that were matriculating, that that's a four year thing. It's going to you know it's going to go for four years, and uh, uh, we do think that there is a, a window of opportunity to to get. I just think the pool that we recruit in generally, uh, Army and Air Force, the pool that we that we get our players out of, we're going to get the same kind of kids. We're going to get the same kind of player, but there, there, there's more of those type of player. The pool's bigger right now. You know, hey, we're not going to get some NHL draft choice. I mean, like the the the, the blue chippers are going to get picked up. You know, it's those good second level kids that are good citizens, uh, good students, good players, come from the right kind of families. That pool, we think, is a little bit deeper right now for, 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 for Army and Air Force. What, is, uh, what does this rivalry with CC mean to you? Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's not many times we get to play games out of conference. Most games are, are – most times it's six games a year. So being able to play out of conference and then our crosstown rivals, like, that we don't get uh, more excited. Usually, usually this is – the cherry on top of our cake so and then the pikes peak trophy any meaning significance to you guys yeah i mean the pikes peak trophy obviously during my time we have we haven't had it we uh we didn't win it freshman year um we lost pretty big in their place and then our outdoor game um at the falcon stadium didn't turn out the way we wanted it to but last year obviously we didn't get a chance to compete for it so um, yeah, we're trying to get it back in our hands this year for sure. What did you learn in the exhibition game with CC to start the year? Um, I think we learned we learned a lot about ourselves. We we've talked about how we're we're young, um, but at the and college hockey's gotten older with like the whole COVID year. But at the end of the day, we know we can compete now. Um, we never really had that doubt in our mind, but being able to go out there and put together 60 minutes, just prove to ourselves that we can compete with anyone. And when you look at Robeson Arena, when you first went in there, just thoughts of playing in that new arena and just being able to just see what they built over there at CC. Yeah, it it brought a big smile to not only my face, but all the guys. Um, We we knew it was an exhibition game, but at the end of the day, it was our first, first real test, and we knew how much it meant to the CC players and fans and coaches to open that open that arena arena up and we uh, we wanted to ruin that for them and that's exactly what we did. The student section seems to be a little bit rowdier than it has been in years past when they played at Broadboard. Do you get that same sense and is there a bit of a different electricity in that arena? Yeah, um, I mean Broadmoor Arena is massive, so um, it kind of reminded us of playing uh, out east with some of our. Uh, conference conference uh, games. Um, there's not many fans there. I mean, there were in at the Broadmoor Arena, but it was just so big. We didn't we didn't you didn't get the sense of that. So being able to, uh, I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of almost uh, the Army Arena where they sit straight up, and so they're all looking down at you in a deep bowl and pounding on the glass. So yeah, it's it's a cool experience. Now, I asked Coach the same question, uh, favorite Halloween candy. I think he said Reese's and uh, frozen Snickers. What do you got? Um, I'm a big Kit Kat guy. Uh, Usually I can eat that in excess. Most chocolates I have to kind of pick and choose when I can eat it. Um, But, yeah, Kit Kats are full go. I just have one more. Um, What is the difference from your team, you think, from that exhibition game to now? Um, yeah, I think we've learned that we can't take any, uh, we can't take time off. Um, we, we came a couple weeks ago with Denver Friday. It was close game 2-1 with five minutes left. Obviously, we didn't get the bounces that we wanted. It ended up losing by a few. And then we came back Saturday and we, we just weren't ready to go. Um, so obviously that was a big loss. Um, not something that 
we want to remember, but we took that with us this weekend, um, this past weekend into Lindenwood and just realized that we need to outwork our opponent, whether we're more skilled or, or we're not. Like, our first thing is outwork our opponent, so that's what's going to happen from the uh, puck drop come Friday night and Friday and Saturday. So I see you have a former uh, teammate, Chad, is it Sasaki? Is yeah, Chad Sasaki. He yep. plays over there. Like, are you guys still friends? And then do the teams in general mix very often socially just because you're in the same town? Um, so I actually haven't talked to Chad uh, since since I came in for basic. I think it's just been, I mean, he's a really great guy. Uh, we just really, we didn't talk much um, with basic and our separate lives with school and hockey and how rigorous it is. But um yeah, I know a lot of people, like, on the weekends we may go downtown or um, around the area, and we do see see them every once in a while, but we don't we don't intersperse that much. Okay. Have you ever had hockey conversations with those guys, you know, at a downtown spot? Um, I haven't personally. Um, we usually leave a lot of hockey out of it when it goes when um, we're around town. Um, so I wouldn't say much hockey talk, kind of. A lot of us have played with each other, know each other, so it's kind of just talking about memories that we've had back in the day. I guess the perception would be, you know, because of their conference and then your conference, you know, it's kind of power five versus non-power five for hockey. Like, is there a talent gap? Like, when you guys were teammates with these guys in the past, was there a difference? And were you ever recruited by a CC or anybody in their conference? Yeah, so I don't think there's much of a talent gap. Um, Obviously, there are the the few teams in their conference that have 9, 10, 11 draft picks. So there might be some, obviously, some talent gap there. But um, we like to we like to make up for it with our work ethic, and I think we do a great job of that. Okay. And then being from out of town, you know, does the cross city thing mean much? You know, when you're not from when you're not from Colorado, does it does it still build while you're here? I guess. Yeah, it definitely builds. Um, I guess with my brother who was a 19er, he he had his four years of um, competing for the Pikes Peak Trophy. I believe they, he lost it his junior year, so it's been away from us for a while. So like, I wanna, I mean, we're not only playing for ourselves, we're playing for the alums that have previously come through come through the program.